His company or the his company? Oh right. Yeah. Now he was into um lighting, isn't he? Or yeah. Yeah. I've written on an AV straight to the local one. He's in Melbourne.
All right, members, we'll get started. Thank you. The Strategy Planning and Partnerships Committee public meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is taken of this meeting. This means that your present at and any or all contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. Members, I welcome you uh, to the uh, Strategy Planning and Partnerships Committee, Tuesday the 2nd of February. I'll start with the acknowledgement of country. The Strategy Planning and Partnerships Committee acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We, acknowledging, we acknowledge that they are continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. Thank you. Uh, apologies and leave of absence. We have Councillor Vishaw on leave and uh, Councillor Abiyad is the is an apology. Uh, and I'm not sure about Councillor Wilkinson. Do anyone know? Okay. Uh, members, can I have someone please move the confirmation of minutes for the 19th of January? Lord Mayor, seconded by. May I have someone second? Councillor Antic. Members, I'll put that. All those in favour? Declare that carry. Thank you. Members, we have no public forum. I have no chair's verbal report. Uh, I'll now call for items for adoption on block. We have a fairly short agenda this evening. Um, item number seven, Adelaide Free Bikes. Councillor Martin. Item number eight, Burnett Street Laneway Closure. Deputy Lord Mayor Hender. Is this your first? This is your first committee meeting as Deputy Lord Mayor. Congratulations. <laughs> And uh, item number nine, wellbeing and resilience baseline measurement. Right, so members, I'll put item number nine to you. Can I have a, a mover and a seconder? Lord Mayor, and Councillor Corbell, um, I'll put that. All those in favour? Declare that carried, thank you. Um, item number seven, Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Chair. I'll be moving as printed, but I have a couple of questions uh, related. Has a second. Uh, yeah. Daniel oh. Bennett, welcome. Yeah. Look, I just uh, uh, was curious in reading the document. Paragraphs 20, 21, 22 say the state government and council are discussing a more sophisticated scheme that could lead to the winding down of Adelaide free bikes. But the consultant attachment, uh, which is uh, attachment B, dated the 27th first, doesn't mention those discussions at all. So the question is, have the consultants been briefed that there is a discussion going on with DIPTI or the state government about the possibility of winding down the program as one of the options? Uh, through the Chair, uh, that is the case, and the consultant has been briefed. Um, this is a brief pre prepared by administration for the consultant to look at it as it currently stands for us to do that investigation. Uh, but certainly they're aware that we would like to pursue conversations with others. So that was that's definitely been part of the discussions. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you. That's what Clara Hannes is seconded. Do you have wish to speak? I, I think this, um, this scheme has grown over the 10 years incredibly and it gives me great joy, for example, to see groups of people riding around the city on our free bikes. I just think, hmm, three less cars. What a wonderful success story, plus people are enjoying the fresh air and, and getting to see the sights of Adelaide and um, basically I think we could continue, we should be continuing to look at what's happening elsewhere and also looking at ways of improving the scheme. Uh, I know, for example, there are places around the world where you don't actually have to return the bike to where you picked it up. Um, and I think that obviously that scheme uh, will be covered by the consultant in terms of is there an opportunity for Adelaide to look at that? Will it result in um, more, you know, increased usage? Um, and popularity and 
you know, opportunities for even motorised bikes, who knows? I think it's time to just revisit what's happening. This has been, as from my perspective, a very successful um, scheme and I'd like to see it increased and improved. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Danny, do, uh, do you have any, want to make any comment on, uh, this might take part of what Council Plan has some questions about what are those opportunities um, I think um, Councillor Claren referred to electric bikes. And do you want to just add any more information on that? Sure, through the Chair, to keep it brief, um, we're looking at a whole wide range of options. Uh, the current scheme is basically higher at one spot, take it back to that same spot. And as you'll see from the statistics, it's largely used by tourists and recreational users. Uh, a lot of the other models around the world look at point-to-point -point commuter schemes. So you pick it up at the train station, you drop it at the town hall, and you pick it up at the festival centre and you drop it at Victoria Square. Um, third generation, so-called third generation schemes. There's a lot of jargon uh, in, in, in this kind of space, but um, ours is a very, very, very different type of scheme. It's very unique in the world, I think it's fair to say, because it's free and it's very much based at the tourist and recreation market. So the option is to expand that and grow it, but still maintain those those good uses. So there's many, many different models and I probably don't have enough time to go through them all, but it is detailed and will be coming through in the consultant's report. And we do probably have the world's leading expert in this area working for us. Great. Thank you. Lord Mayor. Thanks, Chair. A quick question through to uh, Daniel, if I may, please. The, uh, just further to Councillor Martin, in terms of just the choice of words here, winding down, I think the intent is to look at options. Is that, that's my understanding, of course. So after reading this recommendation and the supporting papers and the consultant brief, is that we're looking in the next financial year, the imminent financial year, in terms of doing a deep dive associated with what the options are of a point to point and all of the variables around that with the view that for 17-18 financial year we may be funding a different model. Is, is that the intent of what's looking to achieve here? Uh, through the Chair, um, that's exactly what we're trying to achieve, which is basically keep the scheme running for another year whilst we really nut out the detail of a new scheme, give us time to do that. These things take time, they really do. Um, and so the idea is that we come up with a scheme that's robust, that builds on the scheme that we've got. And yes, we may look at a different model that may mean winding down the current scheme, um, simply because the new scheme will replace it. Okay. Does that answer the question? Just so we Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no more speakers. Councillor Martin, you sum up? Yeah, I'm summed up. Uh, except that I just observed we do have a system here in Adelaide where you pick up a bike and leave it somewhere else, but it's generally called theft. It operates quite, quite widely for other cities. Got nothing else to add to that. Uh, members, I'll uh, put that to you. All, all those in favour, bear that carry. Item number eight, Deputy Lord Mayor, Hender. Move as printed. Have a seconder, please. Councillor Martin. Thank you. I, I just uh, wanted to make a couple of comments about this. I think this is a great opportunity for us to have a look at, um, at creating another little laneway, um, a little active laneway, in what currently is a lane that's used, I think, pretty much for parking cars. Um, and uh, But I did just want to make the point that the looking at, at closing this laneway and activating it is really being brought to uh, our attention because of a development application that's been lodged up by a neighbouring business and I, I wouldn't want us to go ahead with any um, road closure process unless of course that development does go ahead. What we don't want to do is close a little lane and then not have it active. So um, I just wanted to make that point out loud in a public forum um, so that we uh, make sure that we're only going to go ahead with this if the development application itself goes ahead and the um, building owners around there are actually going to use the space that we create. But subject to that actually happening, um, I'm very happy that we take this out to proper consultation now and we have a look at what the neighbours think and that we, um, and we start the process of considering a, a proper road closure for this area so that we can take what is currently bitumen used for cars and turn it into bitumen used for people and to make it a little... Um, lunch, probably a little lunch spot there, which could be a very groovy part of the city. Thank you. So you're happy for that to be taken on notice? Yeah. Adrian? Uh, any other speakers on this matter? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, I just endorse that. Um, 
I went down to have a look at it uh, this afternoon, and, and I regret I couldn't find it. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I think I might have spotted it. But it's a particularly lonely part of the world, I've got to tell you, and so any activation that occurs in that area would be a good thing. And to that end, I wonder why in the background of this, we suggest that we won't provide any public realm infrastructure such as additional lighting or improvements, when in fact it would do much for the area if we did do that. Uh, the, the lighting that I think I identified as being part of this area is not particularly adequate. It's a very- I'm guessing that's because it's gonna come, it'll come under a, dis, uh, a different budget line or a different, um, but I'll perhaps get some comment on that. Yeah, through, through the chair, just a comment. Um, this, this matter has come about through the approach of, of a number of landowners, so it has come, come from them. At this point, the intent would be that they would, I guess, council would provide the facilitation to use the space and they would look at how they use and to curate that space. The other opportunity is through the laneways master plan, which is saying whether there's opportunity through that process in a longer term, in terms of, I guess, the physical fabric. And, and change within that within that area. So that, that's also another opportunity that could be explored. Uh, well, with the, the provisos of Councillor Hender, then I'd be grateful if that became part of the, uh, the process, identifying opportunities for upgrading, particularly uh, uh, lighting and the, um, uh, the the paving of the path area. It's pretty bleak. Yeah. That'll be taken unnoticed. I'm not moving it, I'm just asking that it be noted. It's been noted. Did, did you? I need to add that I think that intent will be picked up through the laneways master plan process that's, that's already started with council. Um, so at this point, the resolution is that, that, that there wouldn't be any physical works or change to that place, but, but that may happen through a separate separate project or process down the track. Yeah. We can certainly consider that through that process. Okay. Councillor Moran, want to ask a question? So this, this lane's been closed and coming into our ownership, or it's still about remaining a private lane? No, it's, it is a council road. Yeah. Um, the intent ready. would be oh. to close it to oh, traffic for certain right. periods of the day. Okay, so, all right. Uh, laneway master plan. I've never heard of it. I mean, I've heard of the laneways off run the mall, but I haven't heard of just general plan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the project only that so far, not oh. the details of how it's started. Okay. Um, I, I would be, if it's um, if they're closing it, I'd say it was becoming more private then, uh, and I would need some convincing. I mean, if it's public, it means it's open to park cars and blah, 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 blah. blah. You close your lane, it's becoming the property in all intents and purposes of that, those people because the public is closed out. So I'd need a lot of convincing to spend any money on what basically is um, increasing somebody's property. But that's a I don't want you to answer that. That's a debate for another day. Thank you. Um, any other speakers on this, Councillor Corbell? Yeah, just on that. Like, if it's closed and they're talking about fencing it off with a chain or something, is that then still open to the public? So they Correct. can't actually, yeah, they can't actually prevent the public from getting in there. We're just stopping the cars and motorcycles from being able to use it as, uh, as a space. It would still retain. It would still be retained in council ownership. Yes. The laneway closure refers to the, the access of vehicles. Well, look, um, yeah, I think this is great. Like, it's, to echo what the others have said, it's not really a, a used space. It's um, in the public realm and it, it can be activated. We've seen the activation of laneways around the city and it's very popular. People love it and I'm sure it'll become a draw card. <coughs> Councillor Henry, would you like to sum up? No, no just to... Oh, to sorry, oh, Councillor Claire Henry. Sorry. Look, I, I don't think we need to jump the gun. This, is, this has been a project that's been initiated by some property owners in that precinct. They might want low lighting. They might want to retain some grunge. Give them a break. Let, you know, I think this is a great, has great potential. People are generally supportive of good things, interesting things happening in laneways. So let's just wait and see. <laughs> Councillor Hendon, would you like to sum up? I think so. 
uh, Councillor Clarence said really what I wanted to say, which is this is a very, we're just looking at closing the road. I think what we're looking at is putting a bollard up and then um, allowing the people around it to see what they want to do with it. And, you know, we know from the experience in Melbourne and even from our own streets that often that requires <coughs> absolutely nothing other than pulling some tables and chairs out and making, putting some people in and it starts to be fun. So let's just see what happens. What's the expression? Lovely, lighter, quicker, cheaper. <laughs> Thank you. Quicker, yeah. lighter, cheaper. Let's, let's try that. <laughs> Members, I'll put that, all those in favour. Let <laughs> that carry, thank you. The members, we have uh, no items for the committee to receive a note. We have no out of session papers for the committee to receive a note. Um, under the business, we have a motion on notice by Councillor Antic. Councillor Antic, um, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I okay. move as printed and I second. Councillor Moran is seconding. Yeah, that's quick. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I, yeah. um, I don't think this requires a whole heap of um, explanation, but it's interesting in the sense that um, the genesis of this motion began as a result of the continual uh, suggestion from some of the residents in the South Ward that they were missing David Plumbridge's old e-newsletter. Um, they, they, um, they, they, they've said it repeatedly. They, they, um, you know, they, they wanted it. They liked it. They liked to be kept informed, and they wanted to, um, you know, to, for that to, to continue. And of course, um, you know, some of us. Uh, perhaps uh, um, you know, not necessarily always in a position to do that. He would do it on a weekly basis. But it got me thinking about the um, the manner in which we communicate with all of our ratepayers and um, and the manner in which we do that and whether or not in this new world of social media it needed um, a bit of attention. So that's how it started. Um, and I have to say, um, from my point of view, prior to um, being elected, I had a particular... Uh, view from what I had read in the media about how, how this organisation worked. I mean, we would continually get a certain narrative which was uh, not always flattering, and, and it's been to my great surprise that upon entering into the, the hallowed walls here, that's actually not been the case. We've got some some magnificent projects that have taken place that just don't seem to get a run. Um, I mean, I just listed a few here just for my own uh, consideration that the Reese's Lane story, which some of you be familiar with, with the, um, the, the the collaboration there between the residents, uh, the, the businesses, and council, in order to really uplift that lane into a way which is which is magnificent, just didn't seem. To, I mean, it's had a little bit of airplay, but it should be getting a lot. It's a great project. Um, the outstanding collaborative work on the on with the uh, Rundle Mall Management Authority in relation to the mall, which I think has been a, is now proving to be a real success, despite initial criticism and. Um, you know, the re redevelopment of Victoria Park has been a magnificent project. It's just, you know, it's been an absolute win. The City Bikes, which we've heard of today, another one. You can go on and on. I mean, there's limitless stories that should be getting press. And, and it's certainly no criticism of, of anyone in particular, but it, it seems to me to be more indicative of the need to perhaps review the way in which we get these stories out so that we're being proactive about it, for want of using one of my dreaded buzzwords, but <clears throat> rather than reactive. And I think that's... I mean, there needs to be something, I think, which is done which um, uh, reacts to this sort of narrative that it's like Keystone Cops around here, which of course it's not. It's an absolute nonsense. So I just, I don't think we're doing that at the moment. It, it just seems to me that what we're doing just needs some tweaking. It's, it may well not be much, um, but there are certain, certain ways in which this can be done, which are certainly well and truly beyond me in terms of you know, social media and marketing and those sorts of things. But there will be people out there that know about it. And we should be speaking to the ratepayers once again, um, the elected members, the administrative staff for ideas as to how best to do that. And that's what this motion really seeks to do. We, we really shouldn't be leading our stories, uh, leading with our chin in a sense. I mean, I think we can sometimes be our own worst enemy in those sort of situations. So I think there are many positive stories to be to be put, and I, and I think we should be trying to do that. And um, I, I guess really what I'm trying to say is harking back to the piecemeal approach, that a very noble approach that was to communicate with residents through Councillor Plumridge's e-newsletter. I mean, I think there is a, a way for us to do that, um, which means we can get it across through all of our different methods. Social media it might be advertising in newspapers. It could be, um, at a very minimum, I would hope, um, a monthly or weekly e-newsletter in the format that it's been prescribed. But this, it's a sum of its parts. So really what I'm proposing is that the report be... Um, prepared and be brought back to this um, committee within a couple of months uh, and that in the interim the, the strategy should include um, some some research with the community and with the um, with the elected members we'll have a workshop 
Um, and I just really want to want to get the ball moving, perhaps rolling in terms of how we can do this better. So um, see you support. Thank you, Councillor Antic, and I'll remind everyone here, as I do regularly to staff, we communicate quarterly to our, our rate payers. We send them a rates notice. There's lots of ways we can add to the messaging around uh, how we communicate with our city. Uh, Councillor Moran, you are the seconder? Yes, exactly, um, Chair. We do have the rates notice. Do we still have um, the page in the messenger? I think that was for a period. That was for a period of time. Yeah, that, that was quite a good idea, I thought. Except I don't think it was very well, interestingly written. It was sort of more or less like an information page. I think people skipped it. But look, the part I'm concerned about, and I've been concerned about for a long time, is the way we respond to the advertiser. The best way to communicate with our public is 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 by the established media, the newspaper, the radio, the television. I agree with Alex. We need to, to perhaps have a news editor type thing. Um, but I think where the general public and our ratepayers get an idea of what we're about is through the advertiser and then following up through the radio and the television. And um, I think I'd be understanding to say it's not very good. Um, we seem to be very risk averse in the past. I, I don't know the new media people, but um, in my opinion, most people here that have run for council did so because they saw such a, a dysfunctional, non-achieving, non-nimble, um, so and then when they got there, they thought, well, hang on, this isn't so bad. So I've been reading this and, um, and it's clearly wrong. To cite a few recent ones, um, asbestos. Now, the front page, Mark Kemp, senior, uh, wrong. And then we read our Lord Mayor, who is just here for a year and has, so hasn't had the history, making sort of excuses that, you know, we'll do this and don't you worry about it, it's all in hand. One sentence needed to be said. It has been done. This story is incorrect. The CEO, obviously through the media department, has written a letter. Too late. It needs to be in there before 9.30, possibly 9 o'clock. Doesn't get in. Um, the pavers, the infamous pavers, not our fault either. Don't explain. Don't Just say no, not our fault. Bank Street, we have the Lord Mayor saying we will learn from our mistakes. Not our mistake. State government's mistake. And yet if I read that, and I think I said a sort of snitchy one to everybody about the rates, this is why we freeze rates, because our ratepayers think we're wasting their money. And that is because we are not getting our stories correctly. We're not briefing our council spokesperson, the Lord Mayor, properly. We're not, um, we have no relationship with the uh, reporters except the personal ones we make. We've got a new reporter sitting in the gallery now. Has our media department introduced him to us or sent us his name? No, they have not. Um, we are sticking our heads out of the foxhole and we've got no protective fire at all. In fact, sometimes I think we're being shot at. Um, I suspect that that part of it, the media response, should be outsourced to somebody like, I don't know, Ball and Company, somebody who really is nimble, agile and get and shoots back straight away and says, that, that article's wrong. And when they and uh, when the staff are asked for comments, so they're correct comments and they're quick and they're politically nousy comments. We, we haven't got any of that now. We're being being we, we make mistakes. Fran Road was a mistake, and we have to wear that. But when we've been crucified on the front page of the paper by totally inaccurate uh, inaccurate stories containing quotes from us, um, obviously unbriefed. Um, I think that has to change because the council is, is lives up. It, it needs to get its message out. And when you can put all the good little newsletters out you like, but one council wastes half a million on pavers, that's worth half a million dollars worth of bad publicity. And we just get it year after year. We had a gathering of journalists and that Martin very sensibly um, and wisely. Um, arranged so we could get to know them and perhaps you know have a chat to them about what we're doing. I think about two turned up. You know, it wasn't very. It was very. We are failing badly, and all you, you're all good councillors. You're all new, relatively new and young, and yet the great uh, readers of the advertiser think think we're still the same council we were 20, 30 years ago. Because nobody knows who you are. I mean, that's why I get mentioned so often. They're just the last one standing that they remember who the hell we were. 
So I think it's, I don't want to be rude to the current people because I think they do, they've do. they come in just recently. I'm talking about the past. But there's a culture of risk aversity. We had Miles Kemp ringing up one day to have a, answer for a few questions. He was told by the then assistant five years ago, uh, we wanted the questions in email form and we will answer them no later than the close of business tomorrow. He rang up and said, this is a good news story for the council. Why is nobody giving me the information? I gave what information I could because he's already written a story. We're not nimble, we're not ad adverse, and we treat the press like the enemy, and that's got to stop. This. We, all our good work fails. Thank you, Councillor Moran. And, um, just to remind everyone that this, we're talking about a particular about a communication strategy based on council antics motion, but there's some, it's a good discussion to have. Uh, Lord Mayor. Yeah, you're in public relations is in there, Chair. That's the part I said I was only talking about. Yeah. Lord, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, look, I very much support Councillor Antic on this. I think it's something which we need to pursue with a sense of urgency. Uh, and I think it's a parallel process uh, further to Councillor Moran's comments. I think we, of course, have to maintain and uh, improve upon our relationships with all channels of media, but we need our own. And that's what this debate is really about, is that uh, many people, our ratepayers most notably, form their impressions about the performance of this City Council based almost exclusively on what they read in the, in the media. Uh, we need our own media, and I think that's what this debate is about. So we need we don't communicate as a corporation, as an organisation, with our ratepayers uh, at all, at all. Elected members will have their own various channels, uh, of course, but I think we need a regular, uh, professional, high quality, uh, unbiased communication channel whereby we are communicating semi-regularly with our ratepayers, residential and commercial, about what this council is focused on. It could be the release of our budget, it could be the release of our strategic plan, it could be the release of any number of initiatives which this council will undertake, Chair. Uh, and I think that needs to be coming out every quarter or whatever it might be. And I think we look forward to advice uh, from the administration team as to what would be the best conduit to do it, how frequently, at what cost that would incur. Uh, etc. And I think it's something we need to address with some degree of urgency. I think it's very, very important and, and it is a parallel process. We will continue to work with the media, um, but we need to have our own communications channels also. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson, welcome. Just to you. make sure you know we're on item 12. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I don't even know where we are on the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Um, I am. Um, feel that um, people get a lot of information through various channels and I tend to be on the same page about Moran where another newsletter is sort of something which it's going to cost us money to produce and resource that. It's probably going to be perceived as propaganda. Um, I would rather see us maybe, uh, and there have been times that I've no, I've been on the same page about Anne and saying, just pleading, can we just buy some media space yeah. in the messenger? The people are reading that anyway. They're already reading. If it's some other publication that's just full of the council buyer's position or something, people will put it in with the Foodland um, shopping catalogues in their recycling bin without even looking at it. That's my view on us spending money on publication separately. Um, but if we actually if it's important enough that we buy us a space in the papers that people are reading anyway, then um, then we can get our point across. Um, on, when there are timely things that need doing, you know, sort of routine stuff that we do every year, you know, do I read rate codes immediately or want to be sort of provide information about that? So, you know, when it's something that's not a routine activity of council, but something particular that we're doing. That's when, uh, you know, obviously we can't just rely on having some quotes in an article. That's not going to suffice. So that's where, you know, a, in, an infomercial figure that we buy space, we buy half a page uh, to provide information on things. One of the first things I did when I got first elected was get the notification of development applications reinstated in the messenger. I used to work in the planning department at, you know, in the 90s and joining only notifications was perceived, perceived as a bugbear, something keen to be got rid of. 
Whereas from a recipient of getting the thing, knowing what's happening in my area, is actually something that people, like myself and other people, found very interesting. And one of the first things I did was get that back into the messenger, not not via some other publication, but into the messenger. It's still in there to this day, and I'm sure people, when they're having their coffee or something like that, are able to check and see if there's some house being demolished in their street or something happening next door to their house in Whitmore Square, or that they haven't been notified about. Um, but um, so I, I think we should really put our energies into uh, sort of picking up the sentiments of what the council meeting is about, but, but focusing it towards using existing lines of communication rather than inventing our own. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson, and the um, administration can take that on board. Bearing in mind this is calling for a strategy, so it might be a combination of all, all <coughs> different paths to and mediums to get the message out. Because we, we'll be involved in formulating the strategy. I don't want this to be a report that's just presented to us. I want us to have a say. So well, we just, just uh, yeah. picking up on point two of the Councillor Antic's motion that this comes back to this committee. Um, with some pride actions and resourcing implications and budget implications and, a, and a, I guess a draft plan. That's how I read this. Can I get some confirmation from the administration on that? Yeah, thank you. Through the Chair, it's our intention actually to have a workshop with councillors on the 23rd oh, yeah, of sure. February where we'll talk principles, values and, and key outcomes as well with you. So we'll take all of that on board before we formulate anything. Yeah, sorry, thanks, Sean. It's yeah, 23rd February. Uh, Councillor Corbell. Thank you. Look, I, um, I really support this. I think it's um, something that's needed. There's definitely a need for a more comprehensive approach to um, our administration's communication strategy. We, don't, we, we do have our social media platforms. We have our media team. They are communicating with the advertiser and the city newspaper and the, the radio. And we see um, references in the media all the time. But sometimes there are inaccuracies. And we need a new avenue, new opportunities to be able to counter that. And our, our, elect, our residents and businesses are calling for that. So like Councillor Antic mentioned, I've had my ratepayers, my residents, contacting me saying, what are you up to? What's been happening on council? Referring to things in the newspaper um, and wanting to know more information and calling for us to be able to provide that. And I think that this is an opportunity for the administration to be able to pr provide um, more information to our community through such areas as like um, uh, an e-newsletter. Neighbourhood Watch is a really good example. They're um, available in your local IGA and different places around the community. Um, the community centres, This is an op that's a place where um, our residents frequent all the time and they should be able to access information about what the administration is up to and what our elected members are up to. So elected members, we have our forms of communication. We have Facebook and Twitter and, and social media, Instagram and all of that to communicate. But this is, this is an opportunity for us to be more consistent and I think it's definitely needed. I look forward to seeing what the administration come back with and to be able to provide some more input into that strategy. Thank you Councillor Goodwill. Um, can I just ask a question of administration? Councillor Antic specifically referenced um, and I think Councillor Goodwill alluded to that, that people like the Council of Pumpers newsletter. Um, the the, the opt-in subscribe for, for e-news, which is about facts, because there's a difference between publicity and promotion versus David used to release, just the facts of council decision making. Um, it, from I, his perspective. From his perspective, <laughs> but there's, there's a difference between, I guess, there's a difference between council decisions and then the good stuff that we're doing. And, and there is, we've always had a conversation around this e-newsletter where, where people can, we, you know, communicate by email and the, um, not everyone wants to do it that way, but this opt-in where they can actually proactively, it's not about us going out and spamming them or getting their email address, but them opting in. What, what, have we done any work on that to date? We've talked about it for a long time. Thank you, through the Chair. Look, it would be our intent to look at those sorts of options through this process as well. So, uh, again, we're really looking forward to that workshop on the 23rd. We'll talk in terms of the, 
the principles that councils would like to see in place, what are your key values around this sort of thing, and then come back with recommendations about how we make that work. Certainly there are a number of councils around Australia who have that sort of model that you're, uh, that you're talking about, so we look to bring back some of the, the key research findings as well and say, you know, this, this is what works and this is what we could replicate or imitate or even improve on uh, here at Adelaide and, and get your views on that. It'd be great to be leaders and the, the you know really innovative in this space. Uh, Councillor Antti. Um, thank you, Chair. Look, just very briefly, I think a lot of it's been said. Uh, it certainly wasn't my intention to workshop it tonight, but a lot of those issues um, are very relevant. And I think really what this is trying to do is trying to find, flesh out through that process what we can and can't do, what we should do, what people want, what they think they wouldn't want, all that sort of stuff. And it's really a you know, a, um, a sort of a, 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 an opportunity to have a look at various different ways of communicating, as you say, just facts, you know, stories that are interesting, all those sorts of things through different types of media, digital print, whatever it might be. So all options are on the table. Um, it's also, I should point out, and I want to be clear about this, certainly not um, um, uh, best criticism of the individuals who are involved now. In fact, I thank the administration, the media team who have been very helpful in this whole process as it is. So I want to be clear about that. This is more just an evolution issue with the new mechanism, ways and means to do it, to, to communicate, I should say. So um, it's, it's, I, I think it's a positive thing. It's not trying to be critical. It's just a question of trying to find out how we can do it better. And um, I think we can. I look forward to the discussion. Thank you, members. I'll put that. All those in favour? Declare that carried. Members, do I have any other business? Being none, I'll close the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair.